Good morning, friends. Uh, the purpose of my presentation today is to talk to you about the importance of centration with the multifocal aisle, especially the diffractive multifocal aisles that are available today. And uh, we can see there are a lot of companies which are actually bringing in multifocal aisles and they're doing a great job. I mean, uh, with each day, uh, the multifocal aisles are getting better uh, than we had before. But uh, the fact remains that it is basically the driver who drives the car. No matter how costly the car is, the control of the car is in the hands of the driver. So it is very imperative and it is very important uh, that uh, there are certain basic things that are followed. And one of those basic things are basically the centration of the multifocal aisle. And um, I'm going to talk to you in this presentation today about the importance of centration of multifocal aisles and the importance of patient selections with regard to this centration. Uh, that is the angle kappa and the angle alpha. All right, so before we start, uh, let me uh, let you know that I have a website uh, and you'd get more information on this topic uh, should you uh, want to get more information on that. And uh, the name of the website is quickguideshupo.com. And uh, it would be worth your time to go to the website because it has a lot of information and uh, on many different topics like the biometry, topography, optical biometry. It is a free website and it is uh, my only motivation is basically to just spread the information and the knowledge that I have gathered over my 14 years of experience in this field and working in the uh, with the various uh, customers in the field. Um, so I would, I'm, I'm sure that you'd enjoy this uh, website. Now to start with, uh, we know about the Purkinje's reflex, right? And uh, uh, the Purkinje's reflex uh, are basically the reflections that come from the each of the mediums in the uh, in the lens, and uh, the first Purkinje's reflex is from the anterior cornea. The second Purkinje's reflex is what is not clinically seen, which is from the posterior side of the cornea, and the third Purkinje's reflex is from the anterior surface of the lens. And again, uh, the fourth Purkinje's reflex is from the posterior surface of the lens. Out of this, what is most important is basically the anterior corneal uh, reflex, that is the first Purkinje's reflex, the third Purkinje's reflex, and uh, the fourth Purkinje's reflex. Now, in many microscopes, it may not be visible, the third Purkinje's reflex. So, uh, so uh, you might have to do with only one reflex from the lens, but nevertheless, it's, it's quite uh, helpful uh, to center the eye oil. Now let's take a situation here. Uh, what you can see in this picture is uh, a torch light and that light is entering through the pupil, right? And uh, it is going through the multifocal lens that uh, you have implanted in the patient's eye. Um, but clearly you can see over here that the opening that is the pupil over here is not uh, absolutely aligned to the torch light that is coming from the outside of the eye. So you can see some of the light is uh, getting obstructed uh, and some of the light is actually passing through the pupil. The challenge over here is that the light is that the light is passing through the pupil is hitting straight onto the steps of the diffractive lens, which is not a very happy situation for the patient. If you're if in this case you can clearly see that your pupil is decentered and uh, or or if your if your pupil is centered in it can happen that your multifocal eye is decentered so if 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 it happens uh, what what the result is that the rays of light uh, are not now going through the center of the optical axis of the lens but it is actually going and hitting the steps first and this can lead to patient complaints, suboptimal results, though the patient might sit C6 by 6 or N6. The patient may not be happy, and this is something that we need to avoid with the multifocal aisle. And we will go in the next few slides understanding more about this subject.
So this brings us to an important uh, observation that is the angle kappa and the angle alpha. Now what is angle kappa and what is angle alpha? Around 10 to 12 years back, a lot of importance was uh, put on angle kappa. We came to know about the significance of angle kappa. Uh, that significance to some extent has lost today by uh, uh, by uh, the fact that angle alpha may have may be more important than the angle kappa but nevertheless let's touch upon the points the angle kappa is the difference between the pupillary axis and the visual axis so i repeat angle kappa is the difference between the pupillary axis and the visual axis so the light that passes through the pupillary axis that is the center of the pupil may not reach the fovea, right? It may be reaching somewhere else in the retina, but not absolutely where the photoreceptor cells, the, the con cells are on the fovea. So uh, the light that actually goes through the pupil and reaches the fovea, that is basically what we can call as the visual axis. Now, if there is a large difference in angle kappa, that is the two lines, that is the one that goes through the center of the pupil, the pupillary axis, and the line that is going and hitting the fovea, that is the visual axis, if there's a large angular difference between these two lines, then we call it an angle kappa. And an angle kappa of more than 5 to 6 degrees may not be very beneficial for patients with multifocal aisles. And you may have to be careful implanting these lenses or multifocal aisle lenses, no matter how good that multifocal aisle lens is in an angle kappa patient. And... Um, as a matter of fact, it has been often seen that the hyperopic patients have more angle kappa. Now, let's also talk about the angle alpha, which uh, probably we understand today is more important uh, because angle alpha is more of a structural uh, challenge. Um, so, every patient has angle alpha, every patient has angle kappa, but uh, it has to be within those limits. So, what is angle alpha? Angle alpha is basically the difference between the optical axis and the visual axis. Again, I repeat, angle alpha is the difference between the optical axis and the visual axis. So what is an optical axis? Now, your horizontal white to white is basically what uh, the lens, if it is not subluxated, if it doesn't have a zonular uh, dehiscence, if the, uh, if the zonules are not weak, the, le the bag is at the center of the horizontal white to white, roughly. And now, in this bag, you are going to put the lens. So the lens would be uh, keeping the other factors aside. The, hopefully, the lens will be at the center of the bag. So that's basically the li line that goes through the center of the lens is basically now the optical axis, which is the center of the bag and it reaches the center of the white to white, keeping the other factors aside, uh, like the patient doesn't have a zonular dehiscence or the zonulopathy. So any difference between the visual axis and the optical axis in this case is the angle alpha. And like angle kappa and angle, angle alpha also, the limit is five degrees, right? So, uh, so that's where you do not want to implant a multifocal eye. A patient who has more angle kappa and angle alpha than what is on an average eye, you would not want to put in multifocal eye. Then it brings us to the question, how do I avoid implanting a multifocal eye in a patient who has a huge angle cup or an angle alpha. Is there a way to understand that? Yes. Today, we are very fortunate. Uh, more and more diagnostics instruments are coming up. And, uh, and uh, one of the uh, uh, instruments that you can use is the optical biometer, which actually helps you to have a rough idea. I would not say a perfect one, but a rough idea of... Uh, the angle kappa and the angle alpha. So all you need to do in this case is basically understand the x and y coordinates uh, of the horizontal white to white and the x and y coordinates of the uh, pupil uh, barycenter, right? So this too would give you an understanding of the angle kappa and the angle alpha. Uh, the OPS scan, if you remember, the OPS scan, which is a topography more of 
uh, gives you uh, angle kappa values in degrees and it should not go beyond five degrees. But when you see these optical biometry machines, they don't give you a value in degrees. So what they give you is basically in terms of millimeters, that is in terms of X and Y coordinates. And what you can follow is basically that uh, you the sum total of the X and Y coordinates is not more than 0.5 millimeters. It does not matter whether it's a minus or a plus, it's a displacement from the, as per the Cartesian coordinates. So you need to follow that and you need to ensure that the patient's uh, X and Y coordinates for the horizontal Y to Y and the pupil barrier center are not over 0.5 millimeters to my experience. So what happens if you have implanted um, in a very high angle uh, alpha patient, uh, right? And as you can see in this picture over here, the uh, Purkinje's reflexes um, that we talked about a little while before, the white uh, reflex is uh, from the cornea and the yellow reflex is uh, from the lens because in this case, a particular lens has been used, which is yellow in color, uh, the intraocular lens. Uh, so. Uh, you can well understand the which is the reflex from the lens. So that's the yellow one. And you can see that they are not aligned in spite of uh, our best efforts under the slit lamp to align these two lights. It was not aligned, which means that this patient would have a very high angle kappa or an angle alpha um, post implantation of the multifocal aisle. So what you need to do is uh, post-operatively when you're seeing the patient, it's not just uh, you just uh, see him in the slate lamp. In a patient's meiotic people, you do not dilate the patient. Um, so what you'd like to observe in the patient's meiotic people is that the reflexes from the cornea and uh, the reflexes from the lens, you could see it through the patient's bull's eye, through the lens's bull's eye. Uh, the bullseye is basically the absolute central part of the lens of the lens where you do not see the uh, steps. So you should ideally see the corneal reflex and the lens reflex all passing through the center of the bullseye. And you will, you will understand that the patient is doing good in terms of centration then. Well, a short uh, video over here to show you the angle, uh, the, the centration of the IOL. What you can see again is the corneal reflex, uh, which is right at the center, those three lights you're seeing. You're seeing the three lights because of the microscope. Some of the microscopes will only have uh, two lights. Um, so uh, those three lights is nothing but you have to take it as one because of the uh, microscope lights are three. But they're all coming from the corneal anterior reflex, which is the Purkinje's first reflex. What you can see is also the um, fourth reflex uh, that is coming from the posterior part of the cornea, of the lens, sorry. And uh, that's always inverted. So you can, uh, by seeing that inverted image of that reflex, you can see, you can understand that that is the fourth Purkinje's reflex that is the from the posterior um, IUL. And what you need to do is basically align those IUL, those two lights, see that those two lights goes through the uh, center of the uh, pupil, um, sorry, the center of the uh, bullseye. And as you make the, uh, uh, pupil meiotic, if you could make it in the table itself with pilocarpine, um, you should be able to see that uh, 
people, the constricted people, through the, um, uh, you should see those two reflexes of the light from the cornea and the lens through the constricted people going through the bullseye. And you know that you have a perfect centration in the eye. Just to summarize uh, what we uh, talked about in this video is uh, the importance of centration of diffractive multifocal aisles in the, in the practice and uh, how important it is to eliminate uh, patients uh, with a high angle alpha and angle kappa from multifocal aisles. Uh, so you don't really choose implanting a multifocal aisle on a patient who has uh, lower angle kappa and angle alpha. We also talked about how to determine angle kappa and angle alpha in two uh, machines, uh, that is the optical biometry machines that we saw. Uh, we also talked about in the sleet lamp what you need to see post implantation uh, that is the two reflexes going through the central um, meiotic pupil and through the bullseye. And uh, we also talked about how you can center the uh, IOL under the microscope with or without uh, uh, some, uh, uh, without uh, those instruments that are available in the market today for centration. Uh, if, even if you do not have one, you can just ask the patient to look on the microscope light to the, on the microscope light and, and then align the corneal reflex and the lens reflexes uh, together and see that the, it goes through the bullseye and through the central bullseye. For more uh, information on such subjects, uh, I would highly encourage you to visit my website, uh, quickguideshubo.com. And also, um, also uh, see uh, the other videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can write to me or you can SMS me or, or call me at uh, this mobile, at, the, at my mobile number. Thank you.